Welcome to this community briefing on our ongoing pandemic response efforts. We're back today because our data is showing some changes in our local situation and the risk of COVID-19 transmission in our community. We have important information we want to share with you. It's, bu it's a busy day for our community and our sign language interpreters uh, unfortunately won't be able to join us. But closed captioning is available and we hope that meets your needs for today. Since our last briefing on March 22nd, our team has kept a close watch on COVID-19 nationally, regionally, and locally. And the situation is shifting once again. Omicron subvariants are driving increases in cases across the country, and we're now seeing an increase in cases locally. On this chart you see now, you can see the decline in weekly cases since early February, with new cases leveling off in March, and then the current increase in cases that began the week ending, ending April 9th. We've experienced five consecutive weeks of increased cases. Our wastewater data is also tracking very closely with our current case data. Results of analysis over the past five weeks have shown an increase in COVID-19 virus particles in wastewater. The City of Lincoln has been conducting wastewater surveillance since June of 2021. Lincoln Transportation and Utility staff collect samples of wastewater each week, which are tested by BioBot Analytics. Under a National Institutes of Health initiative, BioBot, in partnership with Ceres Nanosciences, is recognized as a wastewater-based epidemiology center of excellence. The positivity rate for human testing is also up, reaching 10.2% at the end of last week, May 7th. The testing landscape has shifted with more people using at-home tests, but reported testing shows an elevated positivity rate. This supports that there is an increased risk of COVID-19 transmission right now in our community. The positivity rate usually mirrors an increase or decrease in cases. It's one of the multiple indicators used to measure risk and impact in our community. Now turning to our COVID-19 hospitalizations, the seven-day rolling average is holding steady for now. We haven't yet seen a significant increase as a result of more new cases. From April 7th to May 7th, hospitalizations fluctuated between 15 and 19 patients. Today, the hospitals are reporting 30 patients, with 22 of them from Lancaster County. Thankfully, we've had no COVID-19 deaths reported so far in May. And at this time, it's unclear whether the increase in cases will lead to lar a larger surge. We continue to actively monitor the situation. With these changes locally, the risk dial, which has been in green since March 22nd, is moving to low yellow. Yellow indicates the risk of the virus spreading in the community as moderate. Having a high level of protection against the virus as individuals and in our community helps us be better prepared for a future outbreak. I want to again encourage individuals to get their booster doses. These boosters remain critical in helping protect people from severe illness, hospitalization, and death from COVID. Second booster doses were recently approved for those age 50 and older and those age 12 and over with weakened immune systems. We're seeing increased cases in older adults who haven't received their second booster. We strongly encourage everyone who's eligible to get vaccinated and boosted. More than 67% of all Lancaster County residents are fully vaccinated, and around 60% of those eligible for a booster have received one. Now is a good time to get caught up on your COVID-19 vaccines if you're behind. We offer the vaccination at our health department clinics every weekday, and walk-ins are welcome. For more information on upcoming clinics, visit covid19.lincoln.ne.gov or simply call us at 402-441-4200. COVID-19 vaccine is also available through local pharmacies and go to vaccines.gov to find one near you. 
In addition to vaccination, other public health recommendations include wearing a mask if you have COVID-19-like symptoms, have a positive COVID-19 test, or have been exposed to someone with the virus. Get tested or self-test if you have COVID-19 or flu-like symptoms or have been exposed to someone with the virus. And stay home if you're sick. If you test positive, ask your healthcare provider about COVID-19 treatments that may be available to you or find a test and treat location at covid.gov. People with medical conditions associated with higher risk for severe COVID-19 should consult with their health care provider about taking additional protective actions. A reminder that at-home tests are available at the health department in the main lobby on weekdays during regular business hours. We're located at 3131 O Street and you can simply walk in and pick up one. Test kits are also available at all Lincoln City Library locations. Testing continues to play an important role. If you know you have the virus, you can take appropriate steps to lim limit the spread and protect others. We encourage the public to report their home test results to us. A short form is available on our COVID-19 website in the testing section. And there are instructions on what you should do if you're positive. In closing, COVID-19 is still here and cases are once again starting to increase locally. Our actions have helped shape the course of the pandemic and they continue to do so. Please consider your own personal risk and what actions you can take to minimize that risk. You can find the latest public health guidance on our website. As I mentioned, we don't know if this uptick will lead to a larger surge. We'll keep monitoring the situation closely and its impact on our community. And if we continue to see significant changes, we'll be back with another briefing to help keep everyone informed. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Hi, Pat, it's Matt Olbert from the Journal Star. Hi, I just wanted to ask you um, what you know about hospitalizations in terms of, is it mostly older people, mostly unvaccinated people? Are people staying for shorter periods of time? I mean, are they coming in less sick and going home quicker? Um, anything you can tell me about the hospital numbers would be appreciated. That's a good question. Uh, what I can tell you is we have nobody in the intensive care unit and we have nobody on vents. Uh, we have people who are unvaccinated that are hospitalized in regular units. We have a few older adults. Uh, we're experiencing some outbreak in a couple of our long-term care settings and assisted living. So we do have a few older adults that are now hospitalized that maybe had their primary series. So we've been urging all of our long-term cares and assisted livings to make sure uh, that they're getting the boosters for those individuals. And we're working with the local pharmacies that worked with them previously to make sure we can accomplish that. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Pat, we have a question from KFOR. Is this going to trigger any directed health measures such as masks? We are not considering any directed health measure at this point in time. We're just trying to make the community aware so that they, they can take extra precautionary measures as, we, as we've always advised in the yellow area. I have one more question for you. Um, what can you tell me about uh, variant numbers that you've seen locally? Um, in, have you seen any of the newer variants um, in any of the uh, genetic sequencing that's been done on local cases? On, uh, we have a fair amount of um, genomic sequencing done on some of the tests that are done here, especially through the university. I do know that um, there's been some indication in wastewater, um, but not, not a large amount and not um, much at all. And you're talking about uh, B3 and B, I mean B4 and B5. So we really have no cases in Lancaster County right now. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. OK, 
Okay, well, thanks again for joining us today. And remember to get vaccinated and get your boosters if you're due.